Now, the Hawaii State Bar Association Young Lawyers Division Law Week is this week today uh, through Friday, and volunteer attorneys will be covering different legal topics each day with volunteer lawyers. We'll also have a virtual phone bank to answer questions for callers all week long, giving you some great, useful information. Now, today's topic is district court procedure for traffic offenses. And join us this morning with more details is, is Eton Zo, the deputy prosecuting attorney, and he joins us now live. Good morning, Eton. How's it going? Hey, Chris, how's it going? Oh, it's uh, going good. Law week. So you're the star. Tell us more. Uh, so what happens at my first court date for misdemeanor traffic offenses at district court? So I probably got a speeding ticket. Yeah, so the first court date for most defendants is called arraignment and plea. So here, this is where a prosecutor might dismiss your case uh, for reasons such as an insufficient citation or if there isn't enough evidence to actually charge a case. But generally, the purpose of arraignment and plea is to kind of inform the defendant of what they're being charged with. So this means that the prosecutor is going to tell the defendant in layman's terms, you know, what the charge is. They're going to state what the offense is called and what the maximum penalties that a defendant could be facing if convicted. Um, and if they still don't understand the charge, then the prosecutor will read the full formal charge, or excuse me, full formal language of the charge in court. And the prosecutor will then generally refer a defendant to the public defenders so that they can have representation. And then the judge will enter a not guilty plea on their behalf. Uh, the judge will then give the defendant their next court date. But prosecutors also at this time have the discretion to offer plea deals at the initial court date, but they'll always advise the defendant that they'll be doing so without the advice of an attorney. And that's uh, some very useful information. Also, what is the typical phase of a case in district court? Right, so the first one is usually called a arraignment and plea, but after arraignment and plea, the judge will do one of the following. So for misdemeanor cases, such as an assault three, a theft three, sex assault, those kind of cases, um, because it's a misdemeanor, a defendant has a right to a jury trial. So a judge will have to set a case for a demand waiver of jury trial, meaning the defendant gets more time to think about it, to see if they want to um, use their right to a jury trial and send the, course, uh, send the case to circuit court. But if they choose to waive their right to a jury trial, then it stays in district court. Um, for most petty misdemeanors, it'll just be set for what is called a pretrial conference. These hearings are really multi-purpose, but they're generally just to manage and gauge the status of a case. So for example, defendants might need uh, might need more time to obtain representation from a lawyer. Um, maybe a defense attorney wants to negotiate settlement with the state. And uh, this is just to give all the parties more time. And then after the pretrial conferences, we have actual trial. So in district court, this is decided by a judge only. Um, the state has a burden of uh, producing witnesses and evidence to prove a defendant's guilt beyond the reasonable doubt. A defendant here actually doesn't have any burden, meaning you can actually produce no evidence at all and win at trial. And then after the close of trial, the presiding judge will determine uh, whether a defendant is guilty or not. Uh, some very good information there. Also, so what are some do's and don'ts of court, whether you're in Zoom, at, uh, doing it in Zoom or in person? Uh -huh. So, um, you know, after the COVID pandemic, courts have started to let people come in on Zoom. They're still doing that now. And I would say if you're appearing on Zoom, if you're appearing in person, the biggest thing is just to be respectful, um, especially if you're appearing on Zoom. You know, sometimes people will forget to uh, leave their mic muted. Um, my general advice or what I tell people before court starts is I always just tell people, please remain muted until your case is called. This is because uh, if you leave your mic unmuted or if you're not in a good place when your case is called and it's really noisy, you can't really hear anything. Um, it just slows everything down. Uh, additionally, I think some people at these hearings get a little too heated. Um, they uh, sometimes yell at the judge, stuff like that. You just want to be respectful. Respect is the name of the game, especially when you're in court with the judge. I want to say special thanks to Eaton Zo. Thank you so much for everything you do. And a law week, great time to go get some advice. And they have the phone bank, so you could call in. We'll have that information on our website. Uh, Eaton Zo, have a wonderful day. Thanks, Chris. Have a good one. You too.